Is it true that new junior developers these days cannot actually code? I think some of you may have seen this article because it made the rounds on X, Hacker News, uh, Reddit. It makes the claim that juniors these days can't code anymore because of AI. It's an opinion that I've seen come up over and over again. So is it just another case of an older generation complaining about kids these days? Or does he make a valid point? Let's talk about it. Every junior dev I talk to has Copilot or Claude or GPT running 24-7. They're shipping code faster than ever, but when I dig deeper into their understanding of what they're shipping, that's when things get concerning. Sure, the code works, but ask why it works that way instead of another way, crickets. Ask about edge cases, blank stares. When I was a junior, the first time I caused a production outage is by copying and pasting a line that another teammate had wrote in a different React component and I copied it into my own React component, thinking that it would just work the same way. Not only did that line eventually cause the application to crash for a large number of users, but I didn't know how to fix it when it crashed and it became painfully obvious to everyone during the outage that I didn't do my due diligence in reviewing my own code. It's one of those lessons I feel like people need to just experience and learn the hard way for it to sink in. Anytime you take shortcuts, whether it's copying and pasting from Stack Overflow or AI, there is a price to pay down the road. And in this case, you're trading speed for in-depth understanding of what the heck you're actually coding. Anyways, then he goes on to compare using AI to Stack Overflow. First, search on Google. Then hope some desperate soul had posed a similar question as you had. If they did, you'd find a detailed, thoughtful, and often patronizing answer from a wise gray beard on the site called Stack Overflow. Obviously, this process took a lot more time and cognitive bandwidth than just firing off a prompt to chat GPT. The biggest difference is that Stack Overflow answers are never tailored to your specific problem. Unless, of course, you're asking for just a simple short piece of syntax. From my experience, at least, you can't entirely outsource your thinking to Stack Overflow the way you can to ChatGPT. Like with Stack Overflow, at the very least, you need to somewhat understand how the code works in order to change the variable names or rearrange parts of what you've copied to fit your particular case and follow the existing patterns of your code base. And it's not always the case that the first solution you come across on Stack Overflow works perfectly. So then you end up reading the discussion and then you maybe read 10 or 20 answers from three different websites before deciding on a solution. Along the way, you probably learn a few things that you didn't really intend to learn. And I think this is quite different from using an integrated LLM like Cursor, where you just hit the tab key and you move on. Okay, junior devs these days have it easy. They just go to chat.com and copy paste whatever errors they see. Even lazier ones don't do the 30 second effort of toggling to a browser window. They just use a tool that does it all in one place. You know what? I actually didn't know that ChatGPT purchased the domain chat.com. Apparently OpenAI bought chat.com last November for $15 million from HubSpot. You could say that older programmers are resentful that this new generation doesn't have to do things the hard way, but I think he might make a good point here. Given how competitive the job market is these days, I know it can be so tempting to just fire off, fire off a prompt to chat GPT and get it to generate most of your code for you so that you can ship really fast. It's like how convenient junk food has become. In the past, you had to get dressed and get in your car and then drive to McDonald's. Whereas now you just tap a couple times on your phone and boom, it just shows up at your doorstep. Obviously you can still eat healthy, but you just need to make more of a conscious effort these days to take the less convenient route. Think about every great developer you know. Did they get that good by copying solutions? No. They got there by understanding systems deeply and understanding other developers' thought processes. Before AI, there was definitely a lot more friction in the process of getting answers to your problems. For example, when I faced a problem that I couldn't solve with uh, an internet search, I would spend a lot of time struggling and trying to figure it out on my own because I knew that my, pa my coworkers' patience and time was limited and I just didn't want to bug them for any old question. Like other developers before asking for help, I would do a lot of background research and write out all of the details on the surrounding context 
list out the different solutions I've already tried and other important information. You wouldn't just fire off, hey, how come this line doesn't work after five minutes? Writing down all of this background information and research allows us to clarify our thinking and consolidate our current understanding. And it even helps us identify gaps in our knowledge, which we can then fill by doing a bit more research. Obviously, this isn't easy, but I, I personally find it helps create deeper understanding. Half the time, going through this initial process of writing out all the contextual information and doing all of this background research will solve my problem for me and I don't even need to reach out for help. AI gives you answers, but the knowledge you gain is shallow. With Stack Overflow, you had to read multiple expert, dis expert discussions to get the full picture. It was slower, but you came out understanding not just what worked, but why it worked. In an era where everyone is looking for the next shortcut and just defaulting to the most convenient path, there's gonna be a premium placed on the ability to struggle with a problem. So if you're a junior today and everyone else is relying on AI as a crutch, it's a competitive advantage to actually understand what you're coding and shipping. Not only that, but when you don't just copy and paste from AI and you actually try to come up with a solution yourself, there is a lot of science supporting that the knowledge gained is a lot more durable. Ultimately, it's this struggle that creates mastery. We can probably all agree that blindly copying and pasting from an LLM will make you a worse programmer in the long run if you don't know what it is that you're copying. But that kind of begs the question, maybe it doesn't really matter. For example, a developer writing code these days in JavaScript, Python, or other higher level programming languages doesn't necessarily understand the nitty gritty details of manual memory management and arguably they don't need to. If I'm being honest, I don't know how to code in say assembly and that hasn't hurt me so far. You can make the case that generative AI tools are just another layer of abstraction that allows engineers to focus more on complex problems rather than mundane tasks like making API calls. I saw someone the other day online make the analogy that we don't need to learn how to do long division by hand anymore because we've all got calculators now at the tips of our fingers. Even if that's true, I don't know if I agree with this analogy. A calculator gives you the same precise deterministic answer each time when provided the same inputs, unless your calculator hallucinates or something. ChatGPT, on the other hand, outputs different results each time with its own set of consequences, especially for open-ended programming problems. Now, maybe all of this doesn't really matter if LLMs generated the correct and optimal solution each time. And as of today, it doesn't seem to be the case. In fact, we don't know if this will ever be the case. So until then, foundational knowledge is valuable. Some of you may have already experienced this, but when you use code directly from an LLM without fully understanding how it works, it becomes that much more difficult to debug when th something goes wrong. And without that foundational programming knowledge, you might not even be aware that the solution provided by ChatGPT is incorrect or has potential downsides. He then goes on to suggest some ways to fix this. AI tools are getting better and better every day, but that doesn't mean it needs to make you a worse developer. Learning how large language models work and how to build apps powered by generative AI will give you an advantage in the job market. That's why today's sponsor, Brilliant, is a great place to start learning about how LLMs work using problem solving, not memorizing. Brilliant is an awesome platform that helps you get smarter every day with thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and AI. For AI specifically, Brilliant has hands-on demos that help you understand how these models work and how they're built. Having this information helps you understand the limits of AI models and how they work with data sets. All of this is done through guided lessons and are designed to boost your knowledge in as little as 15 minutes a day. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash Catherine Lee or scan the QR code on screen, or you can click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thank you so much Brilliant for sponsoring this video. First, use AI with a learning mindset. When it gives you an answer, interrogate it. Ask it why. Sure, it takes longer, but that's literally the point. I think this is the most critical point. 
ChatGPT is an incredible learning tool if you know how to use it properly and you don't simply use it as a crutch. For example, most of the times when I'm learning a new concept, I like to ask ChatGPT for ideas on how to improve a certain piece of code that I just wrote. Or when I was reviewing Dijkstra's algorithm, I asked ChatGPT for more examples of graphs that I could practice with. The other tip he mentioned is build things from scratch. Yes, AI can generate that authentication system for you, but try building yourself Try building one yourself first. You'll write worse code, but you'll, you'll understand every line of it. That knowledge compounds. Understanding every line of code that you write not only reinforces your current understanding, but it also builds a lot more confidence. When something goes wrong and you cause a bug in production like I did, you are far more likely to have an idea of where things went wrong and how to fix it. Trying to debug code you didn't write and don't even understand to begin with takes way longer and you just don't even have the same confidence in the solution. In reality, there is nothing inherently wrong about using chat at GPT often for coding. I use it a lot as an advanced form of autocomplete, for example, making a basic API call or asking AI to help me bugs that I might have missed. The problem is when you use it without understanding it completely. And it's so much easier to do that with AI than with Stack Overflow. As the author says, the two aren't the same. One is a lot more convenient than the other, and it does make a difference. And in this case, I tend to agree with him. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, so feel free to comment down below if you think AI is slowly making us dumber or if it's actually the best thing to happen to coding. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.